Hey, Tom here from Made by Loop. And in this video, I'm going to run through Renderly 2, a brand new way for you to manage your renders in After Effects. So let's jump in and see how it all works. Okay, so here we are in After Effects, and I just want to quickly run through the usual process for rendering this composition and why there's a few problems with the standard approach. The usual process would be to adjust the work area bar here, and then I'd go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. This has then added the work area section to the render queue, and I can update these settings here using the render templates. And to change the file name, I can click the link here and set the file name. And this is pretty much how renders have been managed in After Effects since time began. But there are a few issues with this standard approach. The first is that you can only set one default render template for all your renders. If I add this comp to the render queue, you can see that it defaults to my high quality template. So if I'm working on a project that needs a mix of image sequences and ProRes files, then I'm going to be having to change these settings manually quite a few times. The second issue is that every render is tied to the work area bar of the comp. So let's say I've done my render and I've received some feedback from the client. Chances are I'm going to work on this comp, adjust this work area bar again to preview some sections, and then when it comes time to render the whole animation again, I have to manually change the work area bar back to the full animation duration. Not a big job, but it does take time. And it does open you up to making mistakes like cutting the end off the animation, or including some extra frames that you don't want in there. Another issue with renders being tied to the work area bar is that it's incredibly tricky to render out multiple sections of a single composition at the same time. You have to first add your comp to the render queue, then click this link, then select custom down here, then you have to manually choose the exact start time and end time you want to render. And because this is a window, you can't even check the times you've used without closing all of these windows down and starting the whole process again for each section that you need. It really is a mess and it's completely unintuitive. Renderly 2 solves all these problems and more, and makes rendering from After Effects a lot more streamlined and intuitive. So let's take a look at how it all works. So I've got the Renderly2 script docked here, and the first step to using this script is to create some render sections. So in this composition, let's say I want to render out from 0 to 20 seconds. I'll first set the work area bar to 0, and then set the end to 20. But rather than sending this to the queue, I'm going to hit this button in the Renderly 2 panel, Create Marker from Work Area. Instantly you can see that we now have a new marker at the top of our composition that says Render Section 1. Let's say I also wanted to render out from 30 to 40 seconds. I'll adjust the work area bar again, I'll hit the button, and we have a second render section, number 2. I'll just create a few more sections to demonstrate how this all works. Now, if I wanted to be a bit more precise, I could also set the start time and the end time of a marker and click this button instead. But the work area bar option is a lot quicker and a lot more intuitive. What I'm now going to do is open up a second composition here and I'll create three more render sections for this composition as well. Because these sections define our renders, it frees up the work area bar for previews. We don't have to worry about manually readjusting the work area bar when it comes time to render everything out. It can simply be used for the previews and nothing else. So now that we've got our render sections in place, I'm going to click this button to open up the Renderly queue, and this is where the real magic happens. This window shows all of our render sections that we've just set up for all of the compositions in our project. So because I created sections in two compositions, we have these two tabs here. And within each tab, we have the sections in that comp. Section 1, Section 2, so on and so forth. And then in this composition, we have Section 1, 2 and 3. For each render section, we have some render options. We have the folder path, we have the file name, we have our output module templates, which have been set up by the conventional render queue, and we have this checkbox here. When this is checked, we'll render this section out. If it's unchecked, we won't render it out or send it to the queue. So for this first section, 
I'm going to choose a folder and I can either enter it manually in this text box or copy and paste a path from somewhere else. But for now, I'll click browse and I'll choose my Renderly folder here and I'll click open. And you can see that our folder path is now set up for us. It's worth noting here that if I actually wanted this section to go into a subfolder, I could simply type out a subfolder name here like forward slash new folder. And when this section is rendered out, that folder would be created automatically for me. I don't have to create anything via the system dialogues or open any other windows, I can simply type it here, which is pretty cool. Then for a file name, I'll just type Renderly section to keep it simple. Now, the good thing about this file name box being separate from the folder path is that I don't have to open up any file windows to change the file name, like you usually would. I can simply edit this text box as many times as I like, and again, I could copy and paste any values in here that I wanted as well. Finally, I'll choose my high quality template from the output module dropdown, and you can see that it's handily added the .mov to the end of my file name for me. Now, because I want all of these renders to go to the same place, rather than manually typing all of these options again and going through each one for each section, I can come down here to this dropdown that says choose section details to duplicate, and I'll select section one. I can then choose to include the folder path, the file name, and the output module, and I'll hit the apply to all sections button. Instantly, you can see that this has applied all of our sections from section one to the other sections. And for the file names, it's automatically added a little increment for us. I can still go in and manually change each section if I want. So let's say I wanted section two to be a TIFF sequence. I can just select it from the drop down here. Now, because I chose apply to all sections and not apply to all comps, you can see that these settings haven't been transferred to our second composition here. But if I were to go back into the original composition and click the apply to all comps button, we get this little alert saying it's been copied to all comps. And if I open it up, you can see that the same settings have been applied everywhere. At this point, I can send all of these sections to the render queue by clicking this button down here, add selected sections to the render queue. If I wanted to automatically start the render, I can choose this option as well. But for now, I'm just going to add these sections to the queue to show you how it works. We get this little pop-up that tells us our render settings have been saved. And in the background, you can see that our render queue is now populated with all of our sections. I'll hit the escape key to close the window. And sure enough, our sections have been added to the queue. Doing things the old fashioned way, we'd have had to manually add each of these sections to the queue one at a time for each composition. So you can see that this is a massive time saver when you're rendering out multiple compositions or multiple sections. What's really great about the Renderly queue is that all the settings we've just applied are all saved for us. So when I hit the Renderly queue button again, we can see that all the settings are here and we don't have to manually choose our export settings each and every time we do a render. If we were doing things manually, we'd have to edit all of these settings again, but with Renderly, you can just set it up once and you're all sorted. If you want to change the settings without sending any sections to the render queue, just hit the save render locations button here at the bottom. This will save any changes you've made. And if you want to close the window, you can just hit close where you'll get an alert saying any unsaved changes will be lost, or you can hit the escape key to close the window completely. The final thing to note is that all the Renderly settings are saved in this .json file that's added to your project. So if you know your way around a JSON file, if you're good at coding, you could even open this up outside of After Effects and edit all of these render settings via code if you wanted to. So there we have it. That's a brief look at the Renderly 2 script for After Effects. I've been using this script myself for a while now and it's genuinely changed how I render from After Effects forever. Check it out at madebyloop.co.uk. Any questions about the script, do let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, do hit like and subscribe and check out madebyloop.co.uk for more motion design resources.